The majestic sand dunes here rise out of the Gulf of Mexico like the tall white sails of passing ships. The park's namesake, Topsail Hill, towers some 25 feet above the Emerald Sea. Now that's a sandcastle. When the powerful gulf winds blow, grains of sand are swept across the shore until they become trapped by the sea oats and other indigenous plants here. Over time, dunes form as more and more sand piles up. Ever wonder what these wooden fences are for? They help the windswept sand build up to form new dunes. But here in Topsail Hill Preserve, well, these dunes are the result of Mother Nature's hard and persistent work over the millennia. Nice job, Mother Nature. Of course, it's no secret that the sugary beaches along Florida's scenic Highway 30A are among the very best in the world. But among 30A's beaches, the 3.2 mile long beach in Topsail Hill Preserve State Park must certainly be the best of the best as they're virtually inaccessible except through the park. Yes, I said 3.2 miles of stunningly undeveloped and permanently protected beachfront. It's truly extraordinary. If you love to snorkel, be sure to explore the Seahorse Reef just offshore with thriving marine habitats that have been carefully deployed into the shape of a seahorse. This 1,640-acre park is also home to two of 30A's 15 rare coastal dune lakes, including Morris Lake and Campbell Lake. There's also Nonami Lake. Oh, wait a minute. I think that's No Name Lake. I guess No Name Lake is so small, no one's ever bothered to name it. What exactly is a coastal dune lake? Well, Basically, they're freshwater lakes that sometimes fill up with so much rain that they actually burst through the neighboring sand dunes out into the Gulf of Mexico. And eventually, the Gulf reseals those sand dunes with her lapping tides. Coastal dune lakes can only be found in a handful of places around the world. But the coastal dune lakes at Topsail Hill Preserve are especially special as they're completely insulated from the overdeveloped outside world. This is why we have state and national parks. This is the reason you come. Topsail Hill Preserve is also home to one of the top ranked RV parks in the nation. Topsail is home to 150 shaded RV sites. Big rigs are welcome. There's also quaint cabins, tents and glamping sites, a swimming pool and a stocked pond for fishing. There's also Kith and Ken Cafe, a gourmet coffee shop where early risers get their caffeine and pastry fix. I think the uniqueness of this park is the fact that it is a preserve. You know, the preservation side of the park was what was pre-existing, that state land owned, that they really nurtured and said, how can we bring this back to the closest state of historically what it used to be? Well, the ultimate goal is to build advocates that will in turn bring their kids, which will in turn come back to protect those natural resources again. The wildlife here is abundant. Every May to October, loggerhead and green sea turtles return to the same beach where they were born to build nests and lay their eggs. A revolving and miraculous circle of life. Topsail Hill Preserve is a fisherman's dream with both the Gulf of Mexico and her numerous lakes on the daily menu. From the sand, lucky casters might reel in redfish, pompano, Spanish mackerel, king mackerel, while the freshwater lakes serve up panfish, bass, and catfish. Bird watchers following the Great Florida Birding Trail also flock here to glimpse Topsail's many avian residents, including red-shouldered hawks, osprey, bald eagles, red cardinals, Easter bluebirds, snowy plovers, and piping plovers who dart back and forth with the lapping tides. In addition to all of the birds, there are 13 imperiled species that take refuge here, such as the Choctahatchee beach mouse, who works tirelessly through the night 
to spread seeds that ultimately help keep these doomed systems intact. Nice work, Choctahatchee Beach Mouse. Like to hike? You're in the right place. There are nearly 15 miles of tranquil trails here that meander through old growth pine forests, wetlands, sandy scrublands, and of course, the majestic dunes. If your knees aren't what they used to be, the Beach Tram Trail and Campbell Lake Bird Trail are paved, making for a pleasant stroll or bike ride through longleaf pines. So I've been here for six years. I've lived in this area all my life. And every time I walk through our trails, out to our beach. It feels like a, a, a new experience every time from the different plants in our ecosystem. Right. Um, every time you walk out there, you will experience something new. Florida means flowering. Um, and so there's gonna be different, different times of the season, you're gonna see different plants flowering. More adventurous trekkers can take the deer track trail to soak in epic views of the 100 acre Campbell Lake, where you'll discover water lilies, bald cypress trees, and these alien looking pitcher plants. Did I mention that these are carnivorous? Hey, nobody said this trek was gonna be without its pitfalls and perils. The Nonami Lake Trail, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the No Name Lake Trail, will lead you to the edge of one of 30A's smallest lakes. This isn't a coastal dune lake as it doesn't breach into the Gulf, but it's still a wonderful spot to sample the real Florida. The Turpentine Trail is named after the prized resin that was once squeezed from these trees. And if you're vigilant, you might even see what they call cat face pines, named after the distinctive cuts once made by turpentine harvesters who toiled here in these woods more than 100 years ago. On the far west end of the park, the Deep Sand Morris Lake Trail that weaves through ancient dunes and scrub communities can be a bit more challenging. But the prize for your efforts is the magnificent solitude of Morris Lake. History buffs will also love the remnants of a World War II missile testing program, including an old track that was used for moving missiles and other military vehicles across this soft sand. Hey, let's admit it. Most state parks have nature trails, right? They've got birds and assorted critters. I mean, that's kind of why they're state parks. And many state parks offer camping. A few might even offer a swimming pool or a really hip coffee shop. But only a precious handful have three miles of private, undeveloped beach. And I haven't researched it, but I'm fairly certain that only one has an artificial reef shaped like a seahorse for snorkeling. But in all of my many camping adventures, from the Boy Scouts up to present day, I have yet to find a place that puts all of these things into one glorious location. This is Topsail Hill Preserve State Park. This is the real Florida. Florida.